Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm covering Marvel premiere number 15 from 1974. It is a, once again, a 20 center. Uh, I'm still, I'm still trapped in the year of, <laughs> I'm still trapped in 1974 when talking about these comic books. Um, I just, I'm just making videos covering some of the comic books that I grew up with, that I really loved as a kid. Now, I didn't start reading comic books until 1976. So obviously, I didn't get this one off of the spinner rack. But I did end up getting this uh, a few years later in a back in a back bin uh, box of old comic books. I know it was, it was in, probably in really bad condition. But I ended up getting this one and Marvel premiere number 16. Both, both issues cover the origin of Iron Fist. Now, Iron Fist was one of my favorite... Um, one of my favorite Marvel characters as a kid, you know, along with Spider-Man and Captain America and Avengers and everything. But, uh, you know, and I should say he ended up getting his own series uh, that was actually written by Chris Claremont and drawn by John Byrne uh, with Dan Green doing some of the inking on those as well. So it's, uh, it's, it's really cool. And I'll be going over some of those books as well, but uh I guess if you didn't know, his actual first appearance and origin stories were uh, from Marvel premiere number 15 number and number 16 uh, from 1974. And I actually have both of these in really good condition. Um, but these aren't the copies I had from when I was a kid because I know the ones I had as a kid were in really bad condition. I didn't really start caring about the condition of my comic books and actually... Uh, going through what it takes to, you know, properly collect comic books until around 1980. That's when I started getting some of the uh, plastic bags and cardboard backings uh, for the books. It's like, oh man, you know, money was hard enough to come by as it is when you're a kid. And now not only do I have to buy the comic books, I have to buy the plastic bags and can't they just give me that stuff? Um, yeah, I had to buy the plastic bags and the cardboard backers as well. So that was a bummer. But here we go. Kung Fu action in the mighty Marvel manner. Let's get into it. Um, it says awesome origin issues. This is a Gil Kane cover. Um, Gil Kane did a lot of cool covers in the mid-70s, late-70s for Marvel. The Fury of Iron Fist. Um, now, Iron Fist... A, it says a shining new star in the flame flecked Marvel heavens. Plan plotted and polished by Roy Thomas. Editor, he's the author and editor. And Gil Kane is the artist. Dick Giordano is the inker. Um, yeah, uh, Dick Giordano was more known for being at DC Comics, but one of the best inkers, considered one of the best inkers of all time. Um, so let's get into, you see Iron Fist is squaring off here. You got these hooded guys that, you know, he's in the, he's in the mythical, um, the mythical city of Kun Lun somewhere in the, you know, the vast, the vast, uh, abyss of the Himalayas or whatever. Um, and he's trying to prove himself, uh, you know, the, uh, warrior's trial and uh, so he can deem himself worthy of the, of the Iron Fist. So. For this your day of destiny, Iron Fist, today you will eat of the fruit of the tree of immortality or else drink deep of the elixir of death. Now that's cool writing. They don't write comic books like this anymore, man. I'm telling you, this is a lost art. You know, oh man. Like I like to, you know, when comic books didn't suck like they do today. So... Anyway, let's uh, let's get into it here. Cool martial arts panels of uh, Iron Fist kicking the crap out of, out of these uh, mooks, as uh, some people call them. Um, they're just uh, you, know, you got blood flying, and this guy's like foaming at the mouth. Uh, still, he was merely delayed his punishment, not ev not evaded it. As a single lightning kick gives him sorrow to remember till the end of his days. That is cool. He's got, you know, he's foaming at the mouth here. You can see so much, um, you know, if you look at some of the Frank Miller stuff, um, any kind of, you know, Daredevil, which 
you know, he he put the he injected the martial arts style into the Daredevil book when he took it over in late 1979. Uh, you can see a lot of Gil Kane influences in Frank Miller. I mean, down you know, especially looking at these, looking at all the um, the you know, go through and look at some of the if you can go through and look some of the Daredevil uh, panels. I'll be going over some of this Frank Miller Daredevil stuff. Um, that's some of the best books from the Bronze Age of Marvel Comics. So I, I'll eventually get there when I get down to 1979 and 1980 because I was all about this Daredevil, Frank Miller Daredevil run. But, you know, looking back, you can really see the, uh, the influence Gil Kane had on Frank Miller. I mean, look at that. Look at the blood coming out of his mouth. And that's just, a, you know, Frank Miller... You know, he, he was purposely trying to to take some of these martial arts poses. You can you can tell as a homage to to Gil Kane. That may not be the case. This is kind of just the way I think of it. I'm you know, it's pretty obvious when you look at those panels. So here we have the actual origin, the the, the origin of Iron Fist. He kind of starts. Uh, doing a little flashback here, you know, during this uh, trial uh, trial by combat in Kuen Lun. So here he is as a kid. Uh, his father is Wendell Rand. He's a, you know, rich, uh, you know, he's a rich businessman. He's got his business partner and friend, well, friend, uh, Harold Meacham. And he's got his, he brought his wife and kids on a, hiking expedition in the Himalayas to search for some kind of, uh, as it says here, your own mad version of Shangri-La. So they're, they're looking for some mythical city. You know, why would you bring uh, your wife and kids? I don't know. As a kid, I didn't care. Now that I reread it, I'm like, okay, you got to have a plot though, right? And here it is. Uh, they're hiking along, Heather and Danny, everyone's tethered together with like a lifeline and Heather, his wife, Heather, and his son, Danny, uh, start slipping off the bridge here. And, of course, you know, Harold Meacham was going to try to reach him here, but he can't. The next moment, the rope that held the three of you together snapped, leaving your father dangling precariously from the natural bridge. But here you see Harold Meacham's true colors, that he's in, actually in love with Wendell Rand's wife, Heather, so he's trying to stomp his hand here with the, uh, he betrays him here. And he's got his, you see the metal spikes on the bottom of his, uh, of his boots here for hiking. And you see the blood in the snow and Wendell ran. Wendell, oh my God, Wendell. I wish they made a power records of this. That would have been cool. You clear, you remember it clearly, don't you, Iron Fist? It says you, your father fell for a long time, and then he ends up uh, hitting an outcropping of a jagged rock. And you see the blood splattering. So, you know, Wendell ran clearly dead, betrayed by his friend, Harold Meacham. You see that I love this panel here. You see just the horror, the, the tears running down. It's probably freezing. He's like... uh yeah, so here, here Wendell, or uh, here uh, Harold Meacham kind of unravels his his plot here. Um, you know, it, it was this it was this plan all along to kind of betray him and kill him. And then he professes his love to Wendell Rand's um, wife, Heather. Stop! You've got it all wrong. I don't want to harm you, either of you. It was for you that I did it. I've always loved you. I mean, the dude is clearly delusional. So he's like, okay, well, you know, if you don't love me back here and you're not accepting this situation, I'm just going to leave you to die. And that's exactly what he does. So he's like, uh, Danny, are you ready? She's like, Danny, are you ready? Are you ready to try to climb out of here? He's like, yes, mother, I am. So, you know, the testing of a little child here. And then, he, you know, they they snap back to current current time in Kuen Lun, he's like ready, ready for the next trial of, of combat here. And they open the door and it reveals this big martial arts bruiser guy. And he's like, well, my son, will you face Shu Hu? Or shall my dragon kings and I delay this challenge until another day when you are rested? 
No, August 1. My trial by combat must be today. I will not delay it. Then proceed. Let it be as it is written. And they bow here. And then the slug of the slug fest uh, starts. And he, you know, Iron Fist starts giving him his best shots. Hi, yeah. And he just backhands him. That's a, that's a, uh, that's a typical Gil Kane panel here of the backhand slap and the guy flying in the, in the foreground here. That is hard to draw. <laughs> I wish I could draw like that. And Iron Fist recovers. He's like, man, none of my blows seem to be harming this thing, harming this guy. I just gave it away. Whoops. So Iron Fist is basically getting his butt kicked here while these guys are, because rather it seems to this one that he'll, he shall be turned out again into the endless snows that drift beyond the gate of dreams. So I guess if he doesn't pass this trial, they're going to exile him from, they're going to exile him from Kun Lun. It's like, you are not worthy. And while he's, Slipping away here and blacking out. He's got blood dripping out of his nose here and his mouth. He, you know, he, he flashed back. This is a cool way to do an origin story. You know, that Netflix show, I was, I was all hyped when I heard they were doing an iron fist because the daredevil came out pretty good. The, the, you know, the first, you know, all of the seasons of the Netflix daredevil were good. The first one was really good. The first season was, you know, the best. It went downhill a little bit. But I thought the first season was was really good, and I had high hopes for the Iron Fist. Unfortunately, uh, the Iron Fist was very disappointing. Um, they should have just done this. It's like there it is, guys. There's no no need to bring in people that want to put their own spin on Iron Fist. I remember the uh, getting an argument on Twitter. You know, it's X now or whatever. I'm always going to call it Twitter, probably, but. Um, Getting an argument on Twitter, oh, the Danny Rand should be, they should cast an Asian actor. Oh, my God, I can't believe. They know nothing about the character of Iron Fist. It's so obvious. I mean, just at least know something about the source. If you're going to make any kind of suggestions or have any kind of outrage of what should be, know the source. And they even... And, and then they had backlash against Roy Thomas, who created the character in 1974. And he's like, the whole point, it's a fish out of water story. It's, that's the whole point of Iron Fist, is that he's an outsider trying to adapt to their fighting styles and their cultures. And, and their culture and, and being taken in, you know, as a stranded kid. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's go back to the, I won't get out, I won't get in on a, Iron Fist Netflix rant. Oh, though I could complain about it for about a half an hour. But anyway, so here they are. They're, they climbed out. Heather and Danny climb out. You know, he's bringing back these vivid, you know, tragic memories. And they're going through the snow. And then, oh, no, wolves. Wolves have picked up on their scent here. Suddenly, you both weren't alone any longer. And the wolf pack is uh, catching up to them. And it's like, then they Heather sees, no, it can't be. A bridge in the middle of nowhere. It's like a wooden bridge. That place doesn't exist. It couldn't. You know, maybe my husband was on to something. That, you know, this, this mythical city does exist. And then, unfortunately, the wolves start coming. You see, Arr! that's my impression. <laughs> that's my impression of a wolf. Never mind. All right. Run, Danny. Run for the bridge. Hurry, darling, hurry. The bridge leads out over a chasm. Maybe they won't follow us, but the wolves are coming. So she says, look, the wolves are going to catch us. So she sacrifices herself. She charges and, like, jumps into the wolves. And Danny's like, mother? You know, what the heck? And, the, you know, the wolves is just going to tear her apart, as you will see. And he's like, I mean, imagine being a kid and seeing this. Your mother the self-sacrifice. It's kind of like the origin of Conan in the movie where he sees his mother's, he sees his dad get eaten alive by these dogs from these, you know, barbarian invaders. And then you see his, um, 
it, you know, he sees his mother get his head cut off by by Darth Vader, James, James Earl Jones. Sorry, the the Conan that they did with Jason, no, what's his name, Jason uh, Samoa or what? Aquaman. I call him Aquaman. You know, in, the, in I think it was 2010 or 2011, whatever year they made that Conan remake thing. That was even more graphic because they cut him out of the womb. Anyway, it's not about Conan, it's about Iron Fist. I'm just making the comparison between the two. So anyway, the origins are, you know, a little bit similar. He's, he sees his mother die in tragedy. But this is, uh, and then you see these crossbows come out and then the wolves are shot here, you know, with the, they got the crossbow bolts sticking out, but his mother's dead. His mother's eaten alive, blood all over. Her. So, and all this is, you know, all this flashbacks taking place while he's getting his butt kicked by this big uh, martial arts dude. But then something weird happens, like a knife shoots out of this guy's hand and it kind of snaps him out of his flashback. And he's like, okay. And he, you know, he takes the, the knife out of his shoulder here and now he's getting mad. You're merely, now you're merely iron fist. And he's like, you knew... No longer do you feel the pain and the blood which drops could it easily belong to a child who perished 10 years ago. Now you're merely Iron Fist. He's been in Kuen Lun for 10 years here. And you are as well a man gone berserk. And he does this big kick here. And uh, you know you failed before with blows. You thought your strongest. That doesn't matter now as you leap anew into the jaws of steel fleshed doom. So he realizes he's not fighting a man. He's realizing with this shooting this knife out of his palm that this is some sort of android. And you strike again and again. So he's not going to hold back. Now he's going to unleash his power. And here you see the first, uh, the first depiction of him using his iron fist power and it he has to channel his chi and it kind of drains him it drains him of his energy and the famous line every time almost every time that he does the iron fist in the comic books they into your hand until it begins to smolder and glow until it becomes like unto a thing of iron and they use that all the time they use that that line all the time so Roy Thomas came up with that. And bam, you are Iron Fist and you are triumphant. And as you can see here, now how the how the how they make an android, like a sophisticated android human-like robot in Kuen Lun, you know, some desolate village in um in the Himalayas. I don't know. Maybe they were technologically advanced. I don't know. But anyway, it shows him uh the he knocked the android's head off and it and it collapses here clump so he's uh he's pleased the the dragon kings here first the challenge of the many then of the one and lastly the challenge of myself of my will to live of my fitness to live so and i claim at last the right which now is mine to claim. Yes, my son, you have won. The right is yours. The right to choose between immortality, eternal life, and death. But we've no room left to show it or to reveal to you the other full unfettered secrets of the uncanny origin of Iron Fist. Till next issue, this series is affectionately dedicated to the memory of Bill Everett, the most amazing man. Bill Everett, um, was the guy that created the Submariner, Namor the Submariner character. And he also co-created Daredevil. So this is kind of a um, dedication to him. I, I think he passed away uh, a year previous to this book coming out. And he was a friend of Roy Thomas. So um, so anyway, that's uh, the part one of the Origin Iron Fist. Next video, I'm going to get into Marvel premiere number 16, which kind of... Uh, delves a little deeper into the story of the origin of Iron Fist. So, um, so until then, I will talk to you later.